Hello Ryan. And Ryan. <laughs> nice to see Ryan is back. <laughs> Hello Thomas. Satan is here, but hell is. We'll see what we can do about it. Hello, eight, eight. Hello, Loki. It's a really cool, really cheap record. I think it's on your end, uh, Michael. Does anyone else have some crackling sound? the week, um, new records, old records as usual, um, yeah, what's new? Hmm. <laughs> well, for starters, we were listening to Ben Chesney's 2015 album under his guise Six Organs of Admittance, the Hexadic 2, there's two volumes, the Hexadic is his, it's, um, a tuning system he invented that is, uh, yeah, <laughs> experimental in nature, of course. And volume one is all right, but volume two is really the best one, in my opinion. And, um, well, I don't know, I was just thinking about this record this week, and I thought, this is something... Um, that, has, that, that is on my mind regular with this record. Six Organs of Admittance, uh, they have 
dozens of records and um, I've listened to most of them and this is the one <laughs> I decided to get uh, back then um, and I regularly pull it out especially that track that I played Exultation Wave fantastic anyways yeah there was a little bit of a theme hellish theme I don't know it came out spontaneously <laughs> so I thought how can I deliver that theme? well Let's go with Gilbert Ami in Saison d'Enfer, a season in hell, inspired by Arthur Rimbaud, the poet. Yeah, this is from the GRM, the Recherche Musicale. in six parts and it's a great record it's one of the most i guess underrated records from the grm series. oh the microphone is the issue you said okay let me try something Okay, tell me now it's, if it's better, which I hope it is. There's no buzzing when I don't talk, right? And when I talk, there was maybe still. Because I don't hear anything here. Ah, okay. That was uh, that was the echo constellation that was activated for some reason. All right, <laughs> sorry guys. Okay. Yes. I don't know. I hope I have better <laughs> than this, obviously, today. There you go. <laughs> Hello, Vinyl Dreamscape. And, uh, uh, salut, Julia. Salut, Florian. Hello Angela. Hello Ed. All right. Hello Radio Gnome. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I, one of the old problems, one of the old issues back. <laughs> so, yeah, now I lost my train of thought. But Gilbert Ami is mo mostly a modern classical composer, avant-garde, but not super avant-garde. And this is probably his most avant-garde record. So this is on the INA, which is the French National Archives, Institut National de l'Audiovisuel and the GRM, Groupe de Recherche Musicale. This is from hmm, pr probably early 80s, early mid 80s. Nineteen seventy-nine, <laughs> and uh, already, guys, I have to thank uh, a few people here. I have to thank Thomas, Ryan, and Frank for already supporting uh, the stream <laughs> from the get-go uh, with the coffee uh, tipping jar in the description. Thanks, thanks so much, guys. 
the glass the magazines so yeah awesome. this is i guess you get probably more of it if you understand french or it might be the opposite let's listen a little bit hello bill nice to see you hello i <laughs> yeah, I I get that. Hello, August. <laughs> I have some great records for tonight. Um, some quite diverse stuff. So I'm quite happy about that. <laughs> I mean, the first track, the first record, Exotic. Doesn't that sound a little bit evil already? <laughs> and tonight I have to thank also a couple of people who have helped provide me some of the records. I haven't checked the director how much it's worth, but uh, I'm pretty sure you can get this for under 30 bucks, probably much less. Hello Stefan, nice to see you. Ardeers, yeah. Actually, I've, I was listening to our beers earlier today. That's interesting. Hello, Kaylee. Bonsoir. I don't know, Michael. You know, I don't think so. Yeah, there's a little bit of a crackle on the record. Yeah, I think. Oh, is it a game? That's annoying. How is it now? Is it back? Uh, uh, is it gone now? Let me know. Cela s'est passé. Hello, Nathaniel. Je sais aujourd'hui saluer la beauté. I think, yeah, I think I know what's, yeah, there was a glitch in the interface as um, it should have been go good from the beginning and I did something that corrected it but that created, yeah, anyways, we're good now. <laughs> you tell me if it comes back.
This is a record that um, me and Michael talked about a few couple a few months ago. It was a record store day release. <laughs> Can't do anything about that, Ryan. But uh, you'll be in charge of that next time. So this is indeed purity column, as you can hear from the guitar. This is the soundtrack to um, the performance of the um, the play, the theater play, the Steppenwolf. Also, uh, this was released on CD in 2008, and this is the first vinyl issue of this. It also features human avatars, um, a whole side unreleased recordings from uh, for a performance from 2005. And it's a wonderful record. Um, Duality Column is um, one of the original bands on Factory Records. That was actually started by um, Tony Wilson, the, the boss of Factory, who discovered Joy Division, <laughs> amongst other things, Section 25, etc. And I thought, yeah, I would play a couple of. Um, of tracks from that soundtrack as they are quite different. Of course you, st you have the, um, the Vinnie Riley guitar sound uh, all over with his uh, very fun use of delay, echo, reverb <laughs> and um, yeah it's, it, it's, uh, it's a really good record. For the band is not active anymore. Vinnie Riley is He's the guitar hero of post-punch, in a way, but he's a trouble guy. Um, I think the last official release was from 2014. He stops, he um, starts again. We'll see. Um, but it's a, it's a band that, uh, I guess, deserve Constant reevaluation, reinvestigation. Maybe I'll play some more of the Dirty um, the Column. It's not, I mean, Galaxy 500 were obviously influenced by Dirty Column. Hello, Faust. That effect, yeah. He was the, um, how would you say, the, um, the cursed hero. Now it should be gone. 
but this is a new, <laughs> a new issue. <laughs> that is quite strange. Bonsoir Chris. Mentioning Um Kalsum, Om Kalsom. Her name is spelled in many different uh, ways, and she's from Egypt, uh, Egypt, but she's from all over the place, from uh, that area of the Mediterranean. There's a little bit of a guitar theme tonight, as well as, uh, <laughs> as this. I'm not sure, Bill. I know how to fix it, but when it comes back, you, you guys just tell me. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Support your DJ of the night, leave a tip in the coffee jar <laughs> if you can. Yeah, it's a wonderful record, Angela. It's, um, there's, I guess, two sides of pop songs, avant garde pop songs, and the two sides of more freeform guitar playing with uh, electronics, um, but not just music <laughs> from the deep end of the 80s in a way. Cola, wound, now it, it must be gone.
אוקיי. From the Arlen, from the television. I guess there's a kinship between the OT column and, um, and television, at least Marky Moon, in a way. What do you mean, the, from the, the, the issue or from the music? I don't think uh, it's working that way, Ryan. I'm gonna play a song from an old Yoti Column record from about 25 years before this one uh, that we're listening to right now. It will be interesting to, to see the difference. Cheers, Bill. As soon as it starts, tell me guys, because I know how to fix it, but I don't know why it's coming back. It's pretty... I wouldn't say chill. <laughs> what a horrible world, word to describe music, huh? Hellish word. I love how Vinny Riley plays with his own delays but you can feel that it's not about technique he's really improvising and then there's this loop coming back every now and then yeah You know what, Stefan? I tend to agree with you. I'm not... I like the idea of Vinnie Riley and, um, and Jurati Column more than I like most of the results. But this one I really, really like. And um, the one I'm about to play, yeah, it's a pretty good one. This was released, what we listened to, originally in 2008. And this is from 84. Very nice jacket with like, this is glued on, this too. Without mercy. Also on factory. This features on the cello Blaine Heininger from uh, Tuxedo Moon. that one, no? I believe it's a CD only, right? Yeah, sometimes, yeah, almost precious. Thank you. 
you, it should be gone again now. Hello, I'm the dead. Hello, record home. Yeah, the pain is kind of gone everywhere. <laughs> Thank you. that way. Yeah. You know, I met one, uh, two of the guys from Pink Floyd at a gig at the Bateau Phare in Paris, um, where I was playing, DJing. They were there to see the song of uh, a friend of them who was doing electronic music. In a way, I guess you could say that electronic music plays a part in uh, in uh, Pink Floyd's music, anyways. Don't you think so? Yeah, it's it's pretty lovely. Hello, multiverse. has an aesthetic that tends to be a bit too nice for me. Uh, but as Stefan was saying, as Stefan was saying, um, I love it in uh, small doses or when it's really really good <laughs> because it's not that uh, that warm right now Now, probably my favorite record of the week.
thank you Bobby for um, helping me secure this. together. I'm not sure, it's pretty cool right now, Bat. But it's a drum machine, of course, with perks. Yes. that I was thinking I might I might take a week off next week <laughs> maybe we'll see I mean I've been doing this non-stop every week for over a year now apart from one week last January when I was uh, in France Take care of the passing of my father. I've seen live the most with Unsane Rock Band I didn't know there were that many I have four Plan this.
it's an album from 84, the track I just played before. From that. that continued into the track with the saxophone and the drum machine playing with what we're listening to right now. I tend to agree. Hello, Thomas. Yeah, that was touch and go. Well, I agree, like, for me, this lizard were good up until and excluding the album with the falling dog. Most of my albums, uh, apart from the one I showed, are signed by the band. I, I was really into them. Uh, uh, yeah. Scratch Acid were. Weren't there a little bit more rock, rock and roll in a way? Cheers, August. Yes and no, because there's a couple of albums up for them that I really love and most that uh, I don't care for. Hello, Oaken Shield. So what are we listening to right now? Huh? Well, my favorite acquisition of this week. I got this some time ago, but it took a while to reach me. This is in Robert Robert Aubrey, the Robert Aiki Aubrey Love, under his Likens alias. This was released um, in 2005 on Holy Mountain, a label from um, uh, San Francisco. I just find that absolutely amazing. Came with this insert. Robert Aiki Love um, plays. He, he does electronic music like. Modular synth, analog synth, really, really, really good. He has a, an EP on Boomcat Editions from 10 years ago or so, maybe 12 years ago, that is so psychedelic, incredible. And now, nowadays, um, he's getting some Hollywood work. He did the soundtrack, uh, the whole soundtrack to the recent um, Candyman movie. Which was actually better than the movie. The movie was lackluster, interesting but lackluster. There was a good idea behind it, I think. But the soundtrack was pretty good, and this this is exceptional. Thank you. I'm doing it preventive. Uh, okay. Wow. 
voir. Il goes back and it's gone. <rire> Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. And Thomas, um, unfortunately, this one, um, <laughs> you know how it is. Like there was like there there was five, six copies on Discogs of this. And when you look at it, you see the cheapest one first. And it was like fifteen, um, fifteen dollars or so. And then I looked closer and I saw that the next one was like 50, 60 something. So, okay, time to get this record. This will probably never get um, reissued, unfortunately. There is um, a very spiritual aspect to, to the music of uh, Robert. Um, even the stuff he's doing now, but as you can hear in this, it's fairly obvious. It was pretty good. It was not as good as this, in my opinion, not as good as some of his other stuff, but it, it was a, a worthy purchase. <laughs> so, yeah, I transitioned into the next track, which is a different version of the one we just listened to, I feel. It's just, it's funny how this record, I intended to just lead it from the Durity Column track before and it played, it was so good together. The other record I have of his, I play it with some um, Eastern Flute records. His music tends to complement other music like, like to mix it as a DJ with other stuff is always really satisfying or often at least I'll try something else let's see By the way, there's a lot of people who are doing this kind of music anonymously in a way, and when I say that, I mean that it's not too difficult to do that kind of music in a kind of generic way. He is a true master. Cheap is um, 
or cognition observation. I wanted to find it. Uh, I'll find it. I'll play it next week or the week after if I can do it next week. Because, yeah, this is. <laughs> that was yesterday, I think. Or was it today? Was it? Yeah, it was today. I don't remember. <laughs> Give me a clue, and uh, I'll probably think, think about that. Come on. Yeah, this is. I, I was telling you, this, this is really one of my favorite. Uh, Digs of the week, but to be honest, yeah, this is this is just such a must-have record for me.
my D casino clubs. Uh, hello, by the way. Um, I, I think he's either from Chicago or from New York. I'm not sure. now has been a constant source of inspiration for 13 years now what an artist yeah 13 years actress splash on honest john's records Subtle but quite nice textured cover. Actress from the UK. Well, he's an iconoclast for real. I, I saw him three times live. I met him once. Every time I saw him live, it was it wasn't good actually. He was pretty uh, horrible. Uh, I think he. He has not yet managed um, to transfer what he does in the studio on live. Um, I'm pretty sure he is behind a few recent names, artists like um, Michael J. Blood, I believe it might be him. He enjoys sort of uh, <laughs> cryptic, uh, cryptic aspects, but yeah, yeah. Honest John, top label, top record shop that was started, uh, co started actually by uh, Damon Alvarn from Blur or Relax, and who were instrumental in um, renewing the interest in Moondog, amongst other things, and Dub. Thomas. So maybe time to uh, to like the stream <laughs> and uh, and if you can uh, and want and like tonight's stream, uh, leave a little tip in the coffee jar in the description. Which I missed uh, how uh, Bat and uh, Multiversa did uh, <laughs> as well. Thank you, Bat and uh, Multiversa. Much uh, appreciated. This is Actress. His second album, Splash. The first album was quite different. Um, and since that album, he's been constantly at least interesting. Reap is the album he did after that one. Um, I prefer this one, but they're all interesting. Well, um, 
eh, du visste inte, jag faktiskt eh, var i ett band som vann eh, P3 Guld eh, för typ 10 år, 12 år sedan kanske. Men eh, jag absolut, Andreas Tillander. I'm happy you got that one, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it's one of the best records <laughs> ever, in my opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is, this is techno, or house, actually, but this is so much more, in my opinion. And it's got an insane groove. <laughs> All right, so... Thank you, Marcos. Thank you very much. And thank you, Joe, for supporting the, the stream tonight. And maybe supporting my, my holiday next week, if I can manage to, to, <laughs> to take one week off. Uh, that would be... Um, It would be a little bit sad, but maybe, maybe needed, who knows, yeah. Yeah, that, sorry guys, I had a little bit of a Swedish conversation with uh, Oaken Shield. <laughs> so now, okay. Well, the Lee Kenza uh, record was like such a great catch this week. This one. I played the other Mertfield uh, from last, last week, I believe. One of the two records. As Mustichens. Supposedly, <laughs> incognito. I mean, he says it's not him, but if you know as Mr. Chen's and his obsessions and his sound. because in a way this could be categorized as noise, electronic, cosmisha, ambient, so I guess it's and post-industrial. It's, it's also got all the normals like modern classical quality. It's <laughs> just amazing. You know, uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, someone is selling uh, the cover of one of these two for uh, some money, but uh, not the. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> indeed. And this one turned out to be, if 
you're into this kind of is or even into as much the chance this is uh, there's a constant theme on that record but all the tracks are quite different in my opinion or they explore an enough diverse spectrum within the same concept of this these like metallic reverberation sounds that in my world are I don't know the word in English but if you take a boat um, like a bottom portion of the boat inside it if you take the Titanic <laughs> where uh, yeah, where the people work inside to fuel the boat from um, a side project from um, COH Sun. You guys tell me. Oxy, I think it was called. news. Back to tonight's um, theme. Yeah, exactly. And he's got a new album coming out um, that I just ordered this week. Who knows what this is? I'm sure <laughs> quite a few. I'm sure Stefan knows what that is. What happened for those who don't know? I guess most people know the Hellraiser movie by Clive Barker. If you read the original novella, all the heavy pursing fetishism that you can see in the movie was not there. This was inspired by the meeting of um, Clive Barker with Peter Christopherson who introduced him to most underground <laughs> subculture of the time uh, in uh, the West, uh, I guess, which was um, extreme genitalia pursings. And there was a magazine that he, very underground, that he collected, and he showed that to, uh, to Clive Barker, which uh, inspired him to add this aspect to the movie. And they became friends and he commissioned them to do the soundtrack to the movie. 
They started to work on it while production was underway. Did some demos, which we can hear now. And then the mouse, Mickey Mouse, Disney came in uh, through a sub company and offered to give $1 million to, uh, to buff up the production. But they had one requirement get rid of these weirdos and hire um, a regular Hollywood composer which uh, turned, up, uh, turned out to be... what's his name again? Ah, who did a decent job I guess, but yeah. One of these things, uh, you know, the things that never got to be, unfortunately. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. Yeah, I played this at 33. It's true. <laughs> it sounds... Uh, it, it is a 45, but I prefer it at, at that speed. Okay, we can go at 45 for the next one. Radiant Fort, which one is it again? Is it uh, the Graver... Uh, no, no, it's... Um, or is it the new the drummer? Hello, Tracy. So again, these tracks were just demos, rough demos, that were never fully finished. They, they were supposed to be played by an orchestra. the name yeah it's um yeah it's the first time in a very long time I order a record from anyone without even listening or hearing a single sound on from it we'll see I hope it's good yeah sorry about that but it's fixed now Was quite fun. There is a cassette version of this that had slightly different versions, slightly longer. Hello to wheels. 
wrong. <laughs> so now, back to the mainland. This is a record that uh, I've been after for quite some time. Finally got this this week as well. <laughs> well, it's Baud Contrabass, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and, and this is, I think I've stated that before, this is in my opinion, it's not a contest, but it, you know, it's lazy to say it's so, but in my world this is the best control bass player in the, ever. Record, but not impossible to find, not impossible to get. Yanku Dumitrescu featuring Fernando Grillo. Contrabass. Romanian composer, Romanian label. Electrocord. Weirdly enough, with the liner notes only in French. There is, of course, a con deep connection between Romania and France historically and culturally, but still. This is the Hyper, Hyperion, Hyperion Ensemble, written by Yonko Dumitrescu, directed by Yonko Dumitrescu, not for the track we're listening to right now, which is Gamma, Yves Prince, Prime, Fernando Grillo, Solist on Contrabass. coming back, I'm sorry, I, um, <laughs> I tried to be ahead of it, but uh... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love Jan Dimitrescu, I think he's one of the most important composers of the 20th century. I think it's gone, hopefully to pillow twin. Hello. Yes, and uh, wouldn't it have been interesting if Barres had solists on his compositions as well? Because that's what we have here. Thank you. 
won't get uh, opposition from me on that, yeah. All right. Bulgaria is um, usually the country where you get the least amount of this kind of stuff. Romania, Hungary, Yugoslavia, so much. Bulgaria, I was talking about uh, that with someone recently, someone from Bulgaria. So I'm curious about that uh, multiversal. I didn't know that. Yeah. It still is. I think there are three volumes, right? And, um... Yeah sampled on this record I played recently. That's a contrabass. This is so good. <laughs> Some people bought the Likens uh, record on uh, on this cog, uh, despite it being quite expensive now. There were two copies uh, before I played it. There's only um, there was four copies. There's only two left. And now it's now it's an expensive record officially. <laughs> yeah. Killer. We might be going for something a little bit lighter next, but with the, uh, the cello, but still quite interesting. Again, Fernando Grillo is not a very well-known name, but if you get if you get a chance to get or listen to his album on Cremes Records, the Italian label, that will change your perception of the bass.
Kovald is, of course, as well a master. Wow, that's pretty cool. record playing right now I was I must say a little bit surprised to see that there were a couple of copies available on Discogs of this for okay prices I was almost tempted to, to buy these two It's um, it's a, an artist that I featured before, who's great. But. Um, When I played him uh, last time, I know Dom and a few others went crazy and bought everything they could of his. And um, I was surprised to see that this, that one was uh, getting ignored. I think it's maybe because there's zero clips online of it. This is a library record. Jean-Charles Capon. Cello Research. Just... It's not his best record, <laughs> but <laughs> that doesn't say a lot. Charles Capon is a um, classically trained musician from France who is mostly known for his jazz um, work, but not only. He was part of a, a trio called the Baroque Jazz Trio, which is kind of funky jazz rock. When I say kind of totally, like it's a jazz rock, funky jazz rock monster classic. Um, the first track there was kind of funky, this is more modern classical, classical. <laughs>
because it, 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 yeah, it's a library soundtrack, so there's uh, there's a bunch of tracks on this. There is like 14 tracks. Uh, most of them are around two and a half minute long. And I think this is uh, incredible that you can still find this at a, at a decent price. Well, <laughs> they're gone. <laughs> Both copies are gone. <laughs> uh, I spoke too soon. record it just need, it needs some people to, to to feature it to hype it a little bit and they probably did less than 300 copies of that back then some time ago I think but I didn't play the track I wanted to play which is this one because the copy I got was um, had a, a pressing uh, default a pressing issue Nathaniel, what is it? Is it like um, is it records or is it videos? <laughs> that's a good, uh, uh, yeah, that's a good catch. It used to be a cheap record. Now it's not so cheap. Yeah. Hello, Louis. be a fairly common uh, De Wolf record, but yeah, it's one of the good ones. Ah, okay, it's a series of uh, classic libraries picked up by, um, by Madlib, right? Thank you, Multiverser. 
for uh, dropping a little tip in the coffee jar in the description which is a timely opportunity to remind people who watch this now or later um, not during the live stream to like the video if you like the video and if you want to support the channel and help this mean it to be able to get all these like to, to oops the issue is on this one too shit <laughs> well um, I hadn't played it yet I didn't see the I could see it on the previous one so I guess well I'll have to live with it. Uh, yeah, if you want uh, to support, you can always uh, leave uh, a tip in the coffee jar. So thank you, Multiversa. Yeah, always. Hey, Mark. Ah, okay. Low recording did that uh, some time ago with Luke Vibert as well. Is Egon still co uh, connected uh, with um, Stone's Throw? I don't think he is. I don't think he's been for a while now, but maybe I'm off. So this is a Belgian artist. This was originally released on cassette in the 80s. Jan van der Broek. This is a compilation of various projects he had. This is June 11. This part is so nice. There's quite a comprehensive um, description and explanation of the various projects and tracks. I don't feel like it. global out there <laughs> music. I don't know. Should I look them up? Hello, Nick. Hello, Nick.
so if I show just a tiny bit of a cover, okay. <laughs> No, no, no. I know how I'm gonna end this man show. And there's still some price. Yes, yes. This is this is the revolution revolution. 12 inch live version of Revolution Suicide and Peter. What we listen to is live intro film ecstasy. Which is quite different from uh, the rest of the. Recorded at the VHF Sound Center, Rugby, Spring 1988. Whereas the rest of the SME was recorded in Amsterdam. Calden for leaving a, a tip in the coffee jar, much appreciated. This will go, I know exactly where this will go for. There's a couple of records uh, I'm currently working on, so that will help the, to grease <laughs> the, the transaction. I think it's done again, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, very trippy. If not for that track, I wouldn't have gotten that easy. But... <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But now you get a full... Craziness. Nah. 
I wouldn't even call that craziness. This is just superb music that is so serene, but with a paradox because there's so much tension in it as well. So here are his instrument lists. You figured out what is being played on this track. I think this was reissued, maybe a record store that thing a few years ago. Jean-Michel Jarre, for real? <laughs> that, that surprises me a little bit, I must say. Listen to right now, huh? Hey Ben. <laughs> I agree. Uh, <laughs> I've been saying that for quite a long time. Spaceman Free are my favorite rock band and yeah, I tend to say my top three favorite bands. So what is on right now? Huh? Bourbonese Quark. On their own label, Recluse Organization. There was a, some talk about Den Bosch in the um, 
in the comments. Uh, last time we were in Dunbosch with Michael, he got quite a few um, Bobonus Quark records. I got one as well. And um, I'm, I had this one. And um, there's a couple of more I, I, I've been meaning to get. Uh, and uh, I might be taking active measures about that. Next record is a bit of a risk since um, I haven't listened to it uh, since I got it. Because I was a little bit disappointed by it, to be honest. It's an artist I, I'm, I highly respect. I'm always curious about what, where he's going next. And it's quite an old record in his discography. I was quite excited by it when I got it. And I was a little bit let down. So now that I don't have any expectations, let's see. Let's see if I find... Uh, yeah, if this... If this... Uh, gets the cut. Yeah, but Steve, uh, that box that um, doesn't have these LPs, if I know, if I remember correctly, it's mostly only the cassette stuff and compilation tracks. Maybe I'm wrong. You, you tell me. Yes. Uh, then not a reissue per se, it's archival recordings, if I remember correctly. We'll see about that. I'm not convinced. We'll see. All this talk about Jean-Michel Jarre makes me want to drink. Julia, who's, uh, who's here to... Um, I don't know if you knew that, um, Julia, but uh, Jean-Michel Jarre went... Um, uh, his kids were in the same school we were at. Uh, no, it's not easy, but the reissue, I mean, it's not, cru the reissue might be easy. Yeah, the reissue is fairly easy, not super cheap, but not very expensive, it's from the... Um, three years ago exactly. Jean Christopher. So the, yeah, Bobonus Quark is a band that was um, for years, for decades, put in the industrial category. For me it's more post-punk, with some post-industrial inclination of course, but uh, yeah. Very interesting band. Uh, very uneven, but... Le Vézine or Croissy, I'm not sure, but yeah. And his kids were in the, the Lycée Alain when we were there. The very first 7-inch by Jean-Michel Jarre called La Cage, The Cage, is pure music concrète. It's really, really good. It was compiled on a, on a compilation um, Disque de Refus that is pretty interesting. It might be on that uh, upcoming transversal one. Absolutely. I guess because um, Jason Marichain were on the bigger label, weren't they? Weren't they on creation? If you listen to the early 
they've been chewed, came out at the same time as this. This is so much more powerful. Exactly. <laughs> You guys don't know, but for us French people, Jean-Michel Jarre is quite tainted. Now I remember, yeah. Actually, good music makes me want to drink good gin. Jean-Michel Jarre um, makes me want to drink this. <laughs> I know, not nice, and unfair, probably. Oh, you're just coming in and out, uh, Christopher, sorry. There's a, an issue today that I can fix temporarily, but not, I'll have to look into it during the week. <laughs> kind of. So let's see about that record. I'm sorry if I'm crash testing um, this uh, publicly. I should have listened to it again. Um, it's a record, yeah, as I said, I was disappointed by it when it came out. I had expectations, um, but maybe I was not in the right mood. We'll see. That's a little bit of an ex experiment. <laughs> You know, Ed, it's funny you say that, because for me, uh, if you take the track uh, Assimilation by Skinny Puppy, that's a perfect soundtrack for Hellraiser. But I was thinking that, um, considering Liverpool, mid-80s Thatcher England, post-industrialism, Bourbonus Quark would have been an amazing soundtrack and really true to the core of um, the original novella. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Orgbilly, uh, two of the. Um, I would say, okay, well, what would be the best bands from the 80s, rock bands? They would be in the top five, for sure. Top three for me. <laughs> I would add um, Sonic Youth and, and the Pixies. Top five rock and roll bands from the 80s. Sonic Youth, Jason Mary Chain, Spaceman Free, Pixies. What would be the fifth? The wire. <laughs> wire is a little bit maybe in their own category. I'm, I'm looking at my rock record shelves <laughs> right now. Uh, this is pretty good actually. I was pretty sure I, I had been like pretty unfair with that. It's got a pretty bad cover. Still screen though. Oh, he's got a dog. Come on. <laughs> yeah. 
King Brit, Black Unicorns. King Brit, also known as Flockston, uh, Flockston uh, Paradigm. My favorite project of his, the first EP of Flockston Paradigm, in, um, that came out on um, what's the name of that uh, dubstep label? Uh, Code Nine's label um, was revolutionary for me. In, uh, there around 2010. King Brit was the partner in crime of um, ah and now I forget the name. I mean he is from uh, Philadelphia if I remember correctly. He is one of the original non-Chicago acid house uh, producers and um, he also did quite a lot of other stuff. He, he was uh, connected with jazz, soul. He's a great musician, great producer, um, very interesting, very humble, very cool guy, actually. I've never met him, um, but uh, I I've seen interviews of him, and he's obviously someone you'd want to to be around for a little while. Hyper Dev Neck, in him, thank you. Exactly. Uh, the label where King Bridge released uh, records under the name Flockston Paradise. You should listen, you should, should find these uh, records uh, and play them. They're awesome and totally forgotten. This was released in 2014, 10 years ago, kind of. And this was supposed to be yeah, an ambient record by, by him. I only did 300 copies, but I guess no one cared. It's kind of like an audio collage, ambient, free-form composition. Yeah, exactly, good point. Of course, yeah, he produced hip-hop as well. And was a DJ live. Uh, very charismatic, very. Sorry, St. Andrews, like, now it's fixed. It just comes in and out. I can fix it, but I have to be on it every other minute. I have to... Yeah. Now it's fixed. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. Yeah, like, it's the first time it happens. Nothing changed in the setup, so it's something 
I have to investigate uh, to get rid of constantly because now I just need to to do it every I don't know how many two three four minutes <laughs> makes me want <laughs> to So, who is the guy again? Um, big uh, house um, producer, Ibiza mainstay, guy who King Brit used to work with. I, I shared the stage with him a few times um, and he was the nicest guy ever. Ah. Yeah, this label was um, um. oh Josh Wink, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um. King Brit used to be the partner of uh, Josh Wink uh, in, back in the late '80s, early '90s, and they were really good back then. Josh Wink stayed in the club scene, King Brit less so. Hmm. Yeah, it, it might be coming from the mic uh, in a way. Uh, as I still have like speakers here but usually they don't create any feedback but technically they could all right I think yeah we have like two three more tracks to go before I bid my farewell for tonight so Again, if you're not watching this uh, live during the stream, if you like this, please support the channel by liking the video, leaving a comment to continue the conversation. And if you can afford it and you really like it, uh, by all means, um, leave a little tip in the coffee jar in the description that helps a lot. The, um, that helps me to constantly refresh the pool of the records that maybe I would not uh, easily take a chance on uh, but uh, that are part of the investigation <laughs> yeah, not even a great pressing huh? <laughs> this record it's all right I mean it's probably just a little bit dirty oh yeah That King Brood record is obviously like a live jam. This quote is interesting, but um, I'll spend. Um, I'll listen to the whole of it. It's like 22 minute long track. Um, I just feel that it's kind of in between both being a club track and a, an ambient track. So I don't know. We'll see. Oh, great pressing. Wow, a great pressing indeed.
It was kind of a disco time record, wasn't it? <laughs> Radio Gnome Padistir, I don't know. I don't know at all, I think. Tell me more. Tell us more. You're welcome, Russell. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not sure yet, but I'll try. I'll try. Sometimes, uh, yeah. I kind of feel I, I, I need it. <laughs> but maybe I'll feel different next week. You know, in a way, I remember writing an article years ago for a magazine about Detroit and explaining in a cheeky way that uh, I've never been to Detroit, but I know its street very well. Right now, I can't really afford to, to travel for holidays and stuff like that, but what are records? What is music? Isn't it a, one of the best? Or I at least a, a great way to travel. I used to say, I remember when I was young and a bit contrarian that uh, traveling is it's in your mind. You don't need to go to the Riviera, to Greece, to the Barbados or whatever. I mean, when you listen to stuff like that, I mean, First, you can read it. <laughs> There's already that. Like you don't know what this is, what this means. Then the artwork. What is this? This is already something. A sort of abstraction. And then you get this, which is I don't know when it is from, but this is obviously some of the uh, inspiration for the um, the mangaka. Mario, much more controversial than that. This is a compilation, a Japanese compilation of um, avant-garde modern classical, which I got because of two tracks, the Toru Takemitsu track featuring um, solo flute and the Maki Ishi track, which we're listening to right now, Senten, for percussionist and electronic sound. Makishi, I have some tracks of his on different compilations, of avant-garde compilations. And I really like his work. But yeah, this track... Yeah, really good, really good recording. Thank you, Michael from Japan, Ricefield for um, helping me get the, uh, getting this. Quite a rare record, not, not, ex not expensive, not really something that uh, people are looking for, but yeah, this is typically the kind of track, uh, record that I'm getting thanks to, to you guys supporting the channel. I know where to investigate, but there's a lot, so sometimes... <laughs> Um, I need a little bit of a grease. <laughs> Lube. Are you being uh, cheeky, Stefan? I mean, it could be. Huh? Who knows? Let me check.
Well, Wikipedia doesn't say. I mean, when he was born, he could fit. Uh, Ishii is a pretty common name in Japan, though. Isn't it? I'm sure he has, but I don't know them. <laughs> Paddy's tears. Yeah. Yeah, this is... This would probably qualify as an audiophile recording, huh? <laughs> Rumored. Here. <laughs> by Stefan for the first time. <laughs> wow. Nice. Well... I love it when someone has that, like, a lot of us, I suppose, had something akin to that, like, a radio show that opened the gates. But this is really the kind of records I love getting. Wow, this is nice. Hello KS. Well, they're gone now. <laughs> it's an ongoing problem issue tonight, sorry. Sorry for repeating this over and over throughout the stream. It might be an issue with uh, sound stream actually tonight, because I'm not doing anything different than usual. But nice to see you KS. Quite love when it gets going. I got this for less than five bucks um, recently um, in Japan, and someone helped it, like Michael helped me to get it um, here. And um, it's probably not too difficult to find in Japan, but like online, not easy. <laughs> I, I own quite a few uh, Edition RZ. Um, I'm sup I suppose you're m mentioning them because of the Yanku Dumitrescu record. Um, they reissued two of his records. And I, I got a bunch of others: the Luigi Nono, the um, the the Yanni Christou, Yanni Christou that I played some time ago. 
Lumpy gravy. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Wow. Stefan, uh, you're quite encyclopedic as well, huh? Well, the next track is going to be our send off for the night. Um, and I think it's a quite shooting track for living in the sunset. <laughs> but I, I hope you guys enjoyed this stream, um, despite the, the little technical glitch, recurring one. Which I guess, considering a lot of the stuff that uh, you find here that I play, is not aesthetically too <laughs> outlandish, but albeit a little bit annoying, I can imagine. But um, well, I I really I had fun uh, playing these records, and um, even um, even that one before that was uh, I'm not sure sure about it. But um, oh, um, but that's how it is. And um, and next one it is uh, more of a pop record, but um, a band, uh, one of the very first band I saw live, probably in the top, uh, one of the three first bands I I, I saw in back in 1991, I think, maybe 92, I'm not sure. And uh, it's. Uh, it's gonna be fun uh, to play that track as a send-off, and uh, Frank, we're on the same uh, schedule as uh, again next track, which is starting about now. Will be a farewell for this week, and uh, we'll see if I manage to get one week off uh, next week um, if I can afford it, <laughs> well, um, and um, otherwise. Well, I hope you had fun, and let's end with this little nugget. The absolute best Stereo Lab singles, EPs, 10 inch EP. Song of Woe and Flutter. And the amazing name, Narco Martino. So shoegaze pop.
bye. Bye bye.